Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Welcome to our elementary worship. We're so glad that you're here with us once again. May the Lord bless you as we worship together in spirit and in truth. So if you're ready, please stand up and let's go praise the Lord with all of our heart. Jesus. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for looking over us throughout the week so that we may be safe and healthy. Thank you for bringing us here today so that we may be able to worship you and give you the praise that you deserve. Bless us with an open heart and keep us from distractions so that we may be able to better accept your word. Please help Pastor Jamie as she leads us and guides us through your word. Father, please keep us in your presence. Please look over us and bless us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So for today, before we open up the Bible to read the scriptures, let's go over our previous memory verses. For primary elementary, first through third graders, you have been memorizing 2 Chronicles 7.14 by parts. So today, you'll be finishing up the whole verse. We divided the parts so that everyone, even the first graders, can memorize it. Though it was probably too easy for our third graders, right? But the goal was for everyone to memorize God's words. Have you been doing it? Have you been memorizing God's words every Sunday? As easy as we made it, even still, not everyone is doing it. So we want everyone to be memorizing God's words every Sunday and receive your memory verse prizes. But that's not just the prize. The real prize is having God's words in our hearts. So let's read together your memory verse so that what you've been memorizing each Sunday can come alive. 2 Chronicles 7.14. Remember, this verse was our memory verse for the junior elementary, 4 through 6th graders, and three weeks ago. How many of you memorized this verse? Hopefully, you will still remember it. Ready? 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And now for junior elementary, our memory verse from last Sunday was Colossians 1.18. I would like to see all of our junior elementary students, fourth through sixth graders, doing the memory verses as well. Remember to do it with your teachers or send them a video of you memorizing it. Let's read it right here, Colossians 1.18 together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. We have been going through uh, the books of Acts, and now we're going to be going into the book of Colossians because in the book of Acts, we learn that the church began as the believers grew even through the persecution of the church. And today, we'll be reading from the book of Colossians, which is in the New Testament after the book of Philippians and read what Apostle Paul writes to the believers in the church of God. So please turn your Bibles into the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. We'll actually be going through the whole chapters of chapter 2 and 3 today, but for now, we'll just read verse 6, 7, and 8. So let us read it together. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. So why is it important for us to be living in Christ, being rooted and being built up in Him, as verse 6 and 7 says? Because the world, philosophy, and thoughts are so deceptive and lies that it will easily try to take you into captivity in sin rather than living freely in Jesus Christ. This is the true living Word of God. Even the three verses that we just read are so deep 
and that I hope you will pay close attention to today's message. This is after Saul had met Jesus and now became Apostle Paul, follower of Christ, writing about the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and what it means to have new life in him, especially as the one who had actually met Jesus, the risen Christ in person, let us see what Paul writes in the book of Colossians. Paul became a Christian a few years after Jesus died and rose again. He joined the early church and traveled around sharing the gospel with others. Paul often wrote letters to churches when he was away from them. In his letter to the church at Colossae, Paul explained how people should live as followers of Jesus. As you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live in Him, Paul wrote. Build your life on Him. Be strong in your faith and always be thankful. Paul told the believers to be careful about who they listen to. Sometimes the words of the world sound good and right, but they are not based on God's truth. Jesus died to set us free from the ways of the world. Paul wrote, think about godly things, not earthly things. When you trusted in Jesus, you died with Him. Now you live in him. So turn away from the ways of the world. Put away anger, wrath, hatred, lies, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. You used to live this way, but Jesus has given you a new life. Paul said that God is making us more like Jesus. In this new life, no one is more important than anyone else. We all belong to Jesus. Paul wrote, you are God's chosen one holy and dearly loved. Put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another because the Lord has forgiven you. Above all, put on love. Let the peace of Jesus rule your hearts and be thankful. Paul encouraged believers to remember Jesus' teachings and obey them, teaching and encouraging one another. Sing to God with thankfulness in your hearts, Paul wrote. Children, obey your parents because this pleases God. And whatever you do, do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. God changes us when we trust in Jesus. He adopts us into His family and makes us new. Jesus calls us to turn away from our sinful ways and live in a way that honors Him. Phew! There is so much abundant knowledge and depth of our spiritual walk with God that it's hard to comprehend or even to understand unless you are a child of God, truly born of God's Spirit. Today's message is new life in Jesus. Have you received this new life in Jesus? First, you need to be born again. What does it mean to be born again? Does it mean to go back into your mommy's tummy to be born again as a baby? No, that's not what it means. But it means that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to be renewed as a child of God. It means to become something totally new. How do you do that? I'm going to share this gospel, the good news, uh, with a very simple five colors. The first is gold or yellow color, which represents Jesus as the light of the world. He is the Son of God, and He is now seated in heaven with the Father. He was there from the beginning of time of creation to eternity in heaven. Heaven is a color of gold where we want to be with Jesus. It represents that Jesus is the light of the world. But the second color is the color black. What do you think of when you see the color black? Well, yes. It represents sin as the color black. We cannot go to heaven when we have sin. And everyone has sin. Everyone is born with sin, and therefore none of us, not you, not me, 
We cannot go to heaven where God is when we have sin. So what did God do? God loved us so much that he gave us his one and only son. The next color is red. What do you think of when you see the color red? That's right. I'm sure you must have guessed. It is the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that he shed for you and I on the cross. You all know that, right? And he bled this precious blood on the cross to cleanse our sins away. His cross and the blood that he shed on that cross represents his love for you and I. So the color red represents the love of God through his blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is the only way our sin can be cleansed away. And it washes our sins. And the next color is going to be white. What do you think of when you see the color white? Well, it's really hard to imagine here in California. But in the East Coast right now, there's a lot of snow. And so... The white represents white as snow. All of our sins can be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. So the next color is going to be green. And we are changed inside out just like this bag as I'm switching from inside out. As we believe in Jesus, we are changed like Saul from last Sunday when he met Jesus in person. So when we believe in Jesus, we become a child of God as we have been given life through Jesus Christ. And by believing in Jesus Christ, we are born again as a child of God. This green represents life. Because things that have life are green like the trees and the plants. When we have eternal life, all of our sins are washed away. And we can now live with God in heaven eternally with eternal life. Do you believe in Jesus? I hope that all of you do believe in Jesus. And I've shared a simple message of the good news through these five colors. And you can become a child of God when you believe in Jesus. And as a child of God, Paul writes to the believers and says many things in the book of Colossians as we read today. So then, just as you receive Christ, Jesus, as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. And through chapter 2 and 3, Paul says three things. One, set your heart and mind on things above, things in heaven. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Think about heaven as a child of God. And think about God's glory. Live your life worthy of God's glory. How? By put off and put on every day. 
Have you ever played with paper dolls or even Barbie dolls like these? What do you do? You take off what you don't want and put on the clothes that you like. We take off our old self, what we don't want, and put on the new self that we do want. Take off the dirty clothes and put on the clean, nice clothes. Has your mom ever told you that? Well, that's what Paul is asking you and I to do. The second point, put off, is what he is saying. Put to death the old self. Paul tells us to put off the wicked ways of sin, to put to death the sins that died with Christ on the cross. Colossians 3, 5, 9 says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurities, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices. That's a lot of things Paul talks about to put to death and take off. Anger, rage, malice. Do you know what malice means? It means to um, intentionally doing evil, um, intention to do evil. So slander also means putting down others. And filthy language from your lips, cursing words, bad words and lying to each other. These are things we need to definitely put away and put to death. The third point Paul talks about, put on the new self. Now that you have new life in Jesus Christ, Paul writes for us to put on the new self. In verse 10 and 12 to 14 it reads, and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Now as a child of God, we need to put on and be clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, being humble, gentleness, and patience. Sounds familiar? Where did you hear this from? Right, the fruits of the Spirit, remember? The fruit of the Spirit also has love, joy, peace, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. But here in the book of Colossians, Paul adds forgiveness. To forgive as the Lord forgave you. A lot of times it's hard for us to forgive, but Paul reminds us how Jesus forgave us. Therefore, we need to love and forgive one another. And lastly, Paul tells us in verse 17 as a conclusion, And whatever you do, whatever in words or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Paul wraps up with the same words of thanksgiving. Jesus gave us new life by dying on the cross for our sins and rising again from dead to life. Then, we need to live our life with thanksgiving and live for His name and His glory. In your homes, whatever you are doing, whatever words or deeds that you are doing, do it all for the glory of our God as children of God. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. So now, let us turn to Pastor Brian with question from kids and continue with this thought. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Josiah from Indianapolis, Indiana asks, 
If Jesus saved me from my sin, why do I still do bad things? Josiah, I am grateful that you recognize that you still do wrong things. I, we all do that. Um, it takes humility and just being real with one another to admit that and recognize that. You know, in today's Bible story, we learn that Jesus gives new life to people who trust in him. And so your question makes a lot of sense. Then, then why do we still sin? Why do we still live like our old selves instead of the new person that God has created through Jesus? So here's some things that, that might help us understand what's going on here. The first one is this, that before Jesus, we were all slaves to sin. That means that we could not not sin. We were trapped in sin. It's all we could really do. But in Christ, our sin is forgiven and that power has been broken. So we don't have to sin, but here's the thing. We often still want to sin. So the Holy Spirit has given us the power to say no to sin, but many times we don't want to say no. We still want to say yes to sin. And this is the struggle that we have as Christians. There are times that we want to do what's right, but we don't do it. And there are times that we don't want to do what is wrong, but we do it. Our goal is to let God change us more and more as we grow so that we sin less and less. Your goal is to get to the point where sin really bothers you. Instead of loving sin, we want to start hating sin. We want any time we sin that it just bothers us that we run to God in confession and rest in his forgiveness through Jesus. And that's important. I want you to hear this. If you've trusted in Christ, you are completely forgiven. You cannot sin away your salvation. You cannot sin away God's love for you. You're saved. He loves you. He accepts you no matter what, even when you sin as a believer. But when you do sin, God wants us to repent. Why? So that we can experience his love and his gratitude once again, so that we can be in right relationship with him, right fellowship with him, and live the way he intends for his glory and for our good. So here's a question back for you. How do you feel knowing God gives you power through the Holy Spirit to resist the temptation to sin? So the last question was, how do you feel knowing God gives you the power through the Holy Spirit to resist the temptations of sin? Jesus gives new life to people who trust in him. Do you trust in Jesus? Of course. And if you trusted in Jesus, you are forgiven. New life in Jesus Christ here on this earth is a continual put off of old self and put on of new self. We have to do it by faith every single day with the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to repent and ask God for forgiveness of our sins every day and put on the new self every day. That's why Paul says at the beginning, put your heart and your mind on the things above up the heaven because you are a child of God. You belong to heaven, not of this earth. Therefore, live by the power of the Holy Spirit and in Christ alone. That's how you will grow as children of God. Today's message is very deep and so great, like the ocean is so deep and so great, that if you could just even grasp one thing today, one point to live it out in your life, even that one part of today's message you may have received, whatever you have heard or understood, whatever God has talked to you about today, because there was so much in today's word. Grasp just even one little part. Hold on to it. Hold on to that message God has given you and live it out in action. Live it out whether it is to put off lies or to put off um, falsehood from my mouth or complaints or um, hate or anger, just put it off and then put on what God wants us to put on. 
whether it is to resist the temptations, whether it is to give thanksgiving or to forgive, whether to love or to have peace, remember the fruits of the Spirit, whatever it may be, there was so much to be living a new life in Jesus Christ. Live it out by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you can do that one thing today, whatever it may be, I want to tell you that you have succeeded in today's message. So I challenge you. You can even watch this message one more time if you need to go back and hear what God wants you to hear or what you need to learn to grasp that message of new life through Jesus Christ today and live it out in your life. You will experience the power of God today. You will understand what new life in Jesus is all about. So today's memory verse is Romans 1.16. It reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. I believe in the power of the gospel. I believe that when you hear this message today, that it will bring salvation to you and your family. So let us pray. Hands together, close your eyes, and let us go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this new life in Jesus Christ and calling us children of God. And as children of God, Lord, you have given us the Holy Spirit to live out our life with power in this world. Help us not to be in captive of sin. Help us not to be crushed by sin. But Lord, help us to stand up and live and live out our life in obedience to your word. So as our students may learn today to live according to your ways, help us to live out as children of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, the life that is in Jesus Christ. We do ask this in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hello everyone, happy Lord's Day. Let's start with this week's memory verse from Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Okay, today's craft, we're doing a science craft. Have you ever heard of something called the agamograph? Okay, I'm gonna show you, okay? You take an image that looks like this, and you're like, what am I looking at? But when you fold it up like an accordion, right? And depending on how you look at it, you see that there's actually two images there. So here is, here's that, and here's the caterpillar. So this is the craft we were doing today. In your craft bag, you will find this very peculiar looking coloring page. So on each page, there's actually two, two images, but it's divided up, okay? So um, each image is split up into strips, and um, there's another image in between. So when you look at it really carefully, like this one, you can see that on this one, you can see the butterfly. And on this one, you can see actually the cocoon. So when you color this, it's really important that you keep the colors together, like same color scheme for one image and another set of colors for another image. And let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So that very same thing, this is that page, okay? So I wanna show you exactly what I did, okay? This will take some time for you to color. So I would say after you learn how to do this, you can pause the video and so you can get your markers out, crayons out, and color this. As you can see here, it's alternating, okay? So it's really easy. You take your sheet and you color them front and back. 
And this shows the full life cycle of a butterfly, how a butterfly goes through this transformation, just like as believers, we go through transformation by the power of God, okay? So this is today's craft, okay? I'll show you the transformation of the cocoon to the butterfly. Okay, pay attention. It's really cool. Make sure it's folded up nicely. Ready? So there is the butterfly. And well, it was a cocoon. Just like this. So hopefully you'll have fun coloring this and playing around and looking at it from different angles, okay? So that is it for today's craft. Thank you and see you next time. Bye. So this is time of offering. Please give your offering to the church so that we could use it for God's glory. So please send it with your parents or send it to church at the craft drive-thru. Remember that you have your Zoom Bible study with your teachers after our worship. And if you're not connected with any teachers, please email me at jamiekim at bkc.org so that I could connect you to your teachers. And remember that I am doing large group uh, Bible um, Zoom meeting with our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Please join me. I would really like to spend wonderful time with you guys. And once again, our Zero Family Outdoor Worship is every Saturday, and it is now at five o'clock. So please join us with your parents, and I would love to meet you there in person. So let us now end our worship with the Lord's Prayer, hands together, Close your eyes and let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you had a wonderful worship. Remember to live out your new life in Jesus Christ with power of God and hope that you will live out what you learned today. Even one thing, remember to live it out. And may the Lord bless you throughout this week. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.